Oh, I know what I wanted to mention. So you can see the, the depreciation deduction that you get. This is the advantage of real, real estate. You usually don't, you know, most people don't pay cash for real estate. They'll borrow for real estate, right? Um, the interest that you, that you pay on real estate is deductible. So maybe you buy that $150,000 bill or $200,000 building, you take out a loan on it. These days, the interest rate's gonna be a lot higher. Um, you get a deduction for that interest, and then you get this depreciation deduction as well. Even though you haven't, the cash outlay hasn't been that great yet. So you're getting deductions for amounts that you haven't even paid yet. So that can be a big, a big benefit. I don't know why I'm such a screen, but okay. So we went through all of that complication. There is a way, a couple of ways, to just write off everything that you purchase right off the bat. Well, with the 179 deduction, it's not everything that you purchase necessarily. It's not every type of asset. Like real estate doesn't count for this. So the 27 and a half year, 39 year property doesn't count. Personal property is what we're talking about here. First one is the 179 deduction. <laughs> and this used to be a lot more popular before they had the second big write off that I'm gonna talk about. But people probably people still use it. But this used to be a really a really big um, people would use this a lot. So instead of doing this, you can expense personal property purchased during the year as long as the personal property, the total value of the personal property of all personal property that you place in service does not exceed a certain amount. Okay. So, the, and the amount of, so there are a couple of numbers that you need to keep straight here. One is the limit on the deduction. So for our purposes, 2021 is what we're using, it's $1,050,000 is the, the most you can deduct using section 179. That means all that stuff, the furniture that we, that we just depreciated, if it's five-year property, whatever, we can just write it off in total. So that 7,500 that we spent on furniture, we can just write it off in total. But only if the total amount of personal property that we purchased during the year is less than $3,670,000. This number here, we're talking about the total personal property that we placed in service. The 1,050 is a limit on the total deduction that you can take. So once your property, let's see, so personal property limit is between 2,600 to 620, between 2,620,000 and 3,670,000. If it's above this amount, you get no section 179 deduction. If it's below this amount, you get up to 1 million Fifty thousand, section one seventy nine deduction. Between these two amounts, it's going to be you're going to get somewhere between one million fifty thousand and zero. So, again, this is the section one seventy nine limit. This is the personal property limit for personal property placed in service during the year, total personal property placed in service during the year. Okay, so if we have, now you'll notice this range here, the 
$1,050,000. So for every dollar that you are over the lower end of that range, you reduce the amount of Section 179 deduction that you're allowed by $1, dollar for dollar reduction. So if we placed in service, let's look at an example. So we placed in service, everybody, this has nothing to do with income. Income isn't, well, income plays into it in that this can't bring you, can't create a net operating loss. But it doesn't, like these are income numbers. This is personal property placed in service in the year. So if we placed in service, let's make this easy, $3 million. And we want to use section 179. Okay, well, our upper limit that we're going to be able to take is $1,050,000. So we know we're not, we know we're not going to be able to take that because we're above this, this limit. We have to figure out how much we're above this limit. So take this subtract the lower limit which gets us what 400 uh, 380,000 300 so we are 300 if you think of you know one dollar one two three five up to 1.050 here we are three hundred eighty thousand dollars into that which means we're gonna have to reduce the 1,050,000 by that 380,000. So here's our max, 1050, subtract 380. So what is that? maximum is this is our section 179 is 670,000. So we can write off in full $670,000 of assets placed in service. Now, we have to have actually purchased them, right? So it's going to be either that, well, and we did. We placed in service 3 million. So that's fine but we can only take section 179 on 670,000 of them. But that means we get to write off in full $670,000. The remaining 2 million, 200 and so 3 million total, total minus the section 179. Two million three hundred thirty thousand. We're going to use Mather's depreciation on what we just went through. So this is going to give us a bigger deduction up front, obviously, than using Mather's. So that's a section one seventy nine deduction. Um, there is another way to write off 100% though. And oh, the section, so the one, section 179, here's some, some requirements. It has to be used in an active trade or business. So rental properties don't count. Although I think there are some exceptions for some of that stuff. Personal, uh, purchase property associated with investment or rental property is not eligible. It cannot create a net operating loss. What is a net operating loss? That's where you get down to all of your income and it's below zero. Not just your business income, but all of the other income and it's below zero. So the section 179, a further limitation is it can't bring you down below zero. Property cannot be acquired from a related party or by gift or inheritance. Um, and there are some limitations if it was acquired through a trade. 
as well. So there are some, some limits on it. Um, again, it can only be personal property. So, what if we don't like those limits? We don't like limits. We want unlimited, right? So instead of the section 179, we would take what's called 100% bonus depreciation. Th that percentage has changed over the years. It's been 100% for a little while. It used to be 50%, I think it was 25% for a while. Right now it's at 100% bonus depreciation. That means you can write 100% off immediately. There's no phase out range, no upper limit on how much you can how much you can take. Um, it has to be makers, it has to have a maker's recovery period of less than 20 years. So three, five, seven, 10, 15. 20 year property doesn't count. It could be new or used, either one. Has to be acquired and placed in service before December 31st, 2023. Okay, that's because this particular provision, unless Congress changes it, has a sunset provision in it. Meaning that 100% is going to get reduced until it goes down to zero. I don't know what the schedule is for reducing it, but at least for our purposes right now, for what we're doing, it's 100%. So again, can't be uh, real estate, right? Because real estate's going to be have a, a class life over 20 years, so 20 years are over. So it's only personal property that you can use it, but it could be used as well. So you could buy a used truck and write it all off using 100% bonus depreciation if you want. Okay, so it doesn't have the limits that section 179 has. That's why people are using this more than they're using section 179. Back in the day when it was 50%, uh, bonus depreciation or 25% bonus depreciation um, and the section 179 was uh, also being used then people would combine the two or they would tend to use the 179 more than they used the bonus depreciation but right now while this is 100% and there aren't really the limits on it people are using the 100% bonus depreciation now the bad part about this is so if you're taking all of that deduction right now that means you don't get any deduction in the future Next year, you don't get any, you've already taken it, right? So this is, these provisions are used a lot by businesses for tax planning purposes. Deciding, okay, what do we want to deduct? Do we think we're gonna earn, if we think we're gonna earn more money next year, then we probably wanna save some of those deductions for next year, right? Or if we think we're gonna earn less money next year, well, maybe we wanna, and we earned a lot this year, well, maybe we wanna go ahead and load up on these extra deductions this year. Right? Um, so it's used a lot in, it provides a lot of tax planning opportunities for businesses. Um, what else do I want to say about this? The other, the other negative is, so if you take all of that depreciation up front, you've got a seven year, the furniture, seven year property, you take all that $7,500 depreciation up front through one of these uh, deductions, and then you turn around and you get rid of it in three years, you have to recapture as income all of that depreciation that you took up front, because you didn't own it for seven years, right? You're essentially, you're taking seven years worth of depreciation all at once, but you didn't own it for all seven years. So you're gonna have to recapture the four years that you took earlier. Does that make sense? So those are a couple of, of the provisions. Another limitation um, is concerns vehicles. Well, actually, let me let me talk about listed property first, and then we'll talk about vehicles. Listed property is any property that could be used for personal or business purposes. It used to include. Um, I don't think it includes vehicles anymore because it isn't such as taxes. Um, it 
No, it's the, I'm sorry, it's the computers that um, are no longer included in this. So this is where you've got property that could be used personally or it could be used by the business, okay? Um, there are restrictions on that kind of property if the business use falls below 50%, okay? Um, if the business use falls below 50% or if it's never been 50%, you cannot take section 179 expense on it. Um, if it falls below 50%, you have to switch to straight line depreciation on it and recapture any additional depreciation that you had on it. So again, this is, this is property that could be used for personal purposes or could be used for business purposes. They've excluded, it used to include computers. They don't include computers anymore. It's mostly now just automobiles. Um, any property of your type, usually, generally used for entertainment, recreation, or amusement. So a boat, if you're using your boat for, for business purposes, or your airplane, which I know you all have airplanes. So that's the deal with listed property. There's a beer right there. Go through. The last thing I wanna say about depreciation is regarding what they, what. They refer to as luxury automobile limitations. Now, the, I don't really know of any luxury automobile that's $18,000, but um, if it's a vehicle that is under 6,000 pounds, then you are limited to how much depreciation you can take in each year. It's to prevent people from buying really expensive cars for their businesses and then writing them all off. I'm gonna buy a Ferrari for my business, and then I'm gonna write it all off on my taxes. Okay. Um, so these are the limitations. And, and again, it's, well, it's, so the Ferrari is obviously not 6,000 pounds, but if a vehicle is 6,000 pounds or over, it's assumed that it's, it's not really a, for transportation as much, um, although there are vehicles out there that um, are over 6,000 pounds that are used for transportation. This is back in the early 2000s when I was, I, we saw this a lot, your book even mentions it as well. People would go out and buy Hummers. I haven't seen, when's the last time you saw a Hummer? I used to have one. Did you really? Mm -hmm. Then I totaled it. <laughs> you totaled it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Holy cow. I haven't seen one in ages. People used to, there used to be all sorts of Hummers on the road, mm -hmm. right? Um, people would buy those because they're more than 6,000 pounds, it would technically meet this definition, they'd be able to write it all off. Um, but now uh, it's, well, I mean, you still can't, but you can, uh, the most that you can take is 18,200. That's if it's 100% used for business. If it's 50% used for business, that limit then gets reduced to 9,100. So whatever percentage that it's being used for business is gonna be applied to that limit, okay? So for vehicles, there are certain restrictions. Those are called the, the luxury automobile limitations. Um, I think that's it for, now I think that's it for depreciation. Margaret. Any questions? Lots of questions. Your head's exploding? <laughs>